Hey, what's going on everybody? Josh Cathcart here with Hitting Done Right. For this next instructional video, I'm gonna talk about tips for timing. Timing is without a doubt the number one biggest problem with young hitters, but all hitters, um, you know, up until professionals and even those guys are still always talking about being on time. It doesn't matter how gorgeous your mechanics are, if you can't be on time and you can't adjust to off-speed pitches or just different speeds of fastballs, you're not going to be able to hit. So this is going to be all about tips for timing, trying to make y'all's life easier, especially for the young players. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel and then slide on over to my website and you can get your hitting analysis and customized practice plans now that the season's getting started. Hey, what's going on y'all? So let's talk about timing, all right? As far as timing goes, right? That is, it's definitely the hardest thing to do in hitting is be on time consistently. Even the best guys in the world, girls in the world, are not perfectly on time consistently, all right? The reason for this, especially at the youth levels, doesn't have to do with the velocity of the ball. It has to do with when the hitter is starting their load move based on where the pitcher is in their delivery. Okay, I do these online analysis all the time, and what I see when kids get to live arm is they're always starting late. And what I mean by that is starting whatever their load move would be, whether it's that modified leg kick, whether it's the toe touch, whether it's the big high leg kick, whatever it may be, they're starting that move late. And therefore, they then have to rush to try to get their swing off. When we rush, our launch position falls apart, our body overall is not in the correct hitting positions, okay? One of the most common mistakes is that rush, and when they do, the hands come down with the front foot, which now takes away all of our stretch, it takes away all of our power, and it takes away all of our adjustability. If you don't get into that proper launch, being consistent with the barrel is impossible, okay? So first tip, when that pitcher raises his leg, that is when the hitter would start to get into their back hip and start their body moving, okay? Now, just because we load early doesn't mean we swing early, okay? Our load is our gather. Okay, that's like the calm before the storm, right? So we wanna be slow here and then give ourselves time to get our body in position. So starting out, when that pitcher first lifts his leg as the hitter, I wanna start getting here, okay? As the pitcher gets to his release point, okay, right before that ball comes out of his hand, we wanna be at what I call the top of our load, meaning right here in that balance position, for that split second. Again, if you have different styles, that's gonna look a little different. If I was toe touch, it would be right here. If I was big leg kick, it would be up here. But as that ball is being released, get to the top of our zone. Front foot getting down. This is one of those topics there's a lot of debate on it. Um, some guys, you know, high level big league guys, they talk about getting that front foot down early and they're ready to go. Others, they don't want to have kind of that start, stop, start again. They want it to all be flowing. Therefore, that front foot is getting down and it looks like we're swinging almost at the same time. For the young players, you know, youth all the way into high school, I like to think about the 50-50 rule, right? When the ball is halfway to you, our foot is getting down, okay? We're halfway through our swing when the ball is halfway to us, meaning as that foot is getting down, ball's halfway, now all I have is my back hip and hands left to go, okay? For adjustments, Always, always, always trying to make adjustments. I would much rather see my hitters be a little bit late first, 
okay? We don't want to be out here early and reaching for this, okay? If my contact point is way out here with me reaching, and the contact point I want is right here off of my front foot, if I'm a little late, that's a much, much smaller adjustment, okay? I can also have success back here. Whereas if I get out into this area, not good, okay? So I talk about avoiding the two R's. Don't rush and don't reach, okay? Meaning don't rush the swing, don't rush your load because you've started late. And then don't reach out with the hands feeling for contact. If we can get young hitters to avoid those two things, their timing is going to improve instantly. All right. The next thing, working on curveball machines or off speed sliders, whatever it is, from launch position, where we take away all of the load and all of that, we get into this nice balanced athletic launch and then work from here. I love this one for timing. If we're out in front with the breaking ball, players are instantly gonna feel it from this position. If they're late and getting blown up, they're gonna get really uncomfortable. So if you're really having guys or girls that are struggling with their timing, get them into launch, put them on the off-speed machine, okay? It has worked wonders with my players. Actually, I don't have a machine, my right arm, but I throw a lot of curveballs and sliders, okay? So get them into that launch position, work off speed, allowing the ball to travel into the hitting zone. All right, y'all, so that concludes this video. Again, timing is extremely difficult, but I hope those tips will help. Start your load when the pitcher lifts his leg, be at the top of your load when the pitcher is releasing the ball, have that foot coming down as that ball is halfway to home plate, your timing, your recognition, your adjustability should all improve. So I hope that helps. Y'all be good. Bring the back knee to the middle, bring that to my hand. 